morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, as traditional every day, it's my break. Drinking some vitamin C water this morning. Trying to keep healthy. So many people around me got um, that are fighting health issues. Let's put it that way. So what we put in our body, we got to put something in our body to fight against um, all the toxins around us. And the same thing goes for life. Same things goes for my uh, struggle with sexual addiction and my overcoming it. Um, whatever I put in, I have to, I have to dilute the negative influences around me, and there are a lot of those. And um, I thought today I would kind of not talk about the painful events so much, but most likely talk about um, limbic lies a little bit to make sure you understand that, and a couple other things. Uh, you know, a God perspective. I want to take the time to just be positive. And not just focus on the addiction, the addiction, the addiction, so much. You know what I mean? I just want to, um, I, I, Mural, hi, cuz, how you doing? I, I just want to take the time to actually, you know, talk about, you know, what are the definitions of some of these things that I'm talking about. Just understand that you know that this is to focus on what's bad, what's happened bad in the past, and all of that. But it's absolutely about restoration. It's about healing. And so I just want to take a couple minutes just to cover that with you, okay? Um, Olympic lies first. Let me tell you something about it because this is what the devil's strategy really is. Listen to this. Hell takes our imaginations and our fantasies captive, usually by wounding us. And we begin to believe the worst about ourselves and about life. Right where you were wounded, the enemy inserted Olympic lie. For example, if you were sexually abused as a child, you may believe the lie that you're worthless. That's a lie. That's a limbic lie. When the Holy Spirit ministers to men in sexual bondage, he will often encounter them at the place where they've been wounded and give them new memories. And that's the hope I want to tell you today, that God is giving you new memories. God wants to give you new memories. He wants to give me new memories. Not just the old for us to dwell on the old and dwell on the pain and dwell on the hurt and focus on the negative and focus on what was done to me. And we take the crying baby everywhere we go and say, this happened to me. I was born in the wrong family. I was abused. My daddy abused me. No, we're not talking about trying to find uh, someone to feel sorry for you. But rather we talk about these things, these things with the objective in mind of restoration and of healing. Okay, so based on that, we have to have the right God perspective. And here, here's what that is. What you believe about God is the most important thing about you. If you have an angry, judgmental God, you'll be rigid, judgmental, and addicted because you won't understand God's grace. Okay, so I want you to investigate this morning and think about what type of God do I have? What type of, what's my perception of God? And a lot of times that's been influenced by our perspective of our father, a father that was not there, a father that might have been absent, a father that might have been there but just uh, was not available to you, a father that was there but was abusive, a father that was there but was manipulative and controlling, okay? And uh, you don't have very good memories about it. Okay, so we need to have the right God perspective. We, God is our father. He's the good, good father. Okay, that's who he is. And he's the God that has plans for you, plans to prosper you, plans for you to be restored, plans for you to overcome all the things that you're struggling with. So I want to encourage you with that today. Also, another thing we'll struggle with with Olympic lies is knowledge versus belief. Knowledge versus belief. Okay. And here, here goes. The enemy wants to build strongholds. Listen to this. Okay? Of lies in your mind. Okay? A noema. It's the Greek word noema. A stronghold in the mind. You know when it talks about pulling down of the strongholds? God wants to pull down those. They exist in your mind, in your thought process. So the battle really is for the brain, for the mind of men. Okay? Okay? In your mind. Many Christians are deceived because they equate what they know with what they believe. They equate what they know with what they believe. The two are not the same. What we really believe often gets covered up with knowledge. Part of the healing process is to dig through the knowledge and get down to the lie. That's motivating the destructive behavior. The lie that's motivating the destructive behavior. All behavior is based not on knowledge but on belief. So today really is what is it that you believe about yourself? What is it that you believe about God? 
what is your knowledge versus your belief? See, you, you will not be governed and you will not respond out of your knowledge, but you'll respond out of your belief. Okay? And that's why the Bible says, as a man believes in his heart, so is he. So today, the question is, what, is what, what do you believe about yourself? Do you believe you can overcome your struggle, overcome your, or your addiction? Do you believe that you are more than a conqueror? Because you are. Okay? So uh, because of this, a lot of times when we cover up the lies, the enemy, that we believe with the knowledge that we have acquired in church, okay, you can't get into the healing process. Okay? The first step of the healing process really is this. The first step of the healing process is to recognize God's unconditional love for you. Next, identify the wounds and ask God for healing. Finally, learn to be honest in your group or in your sphere of influence, the people that you communicate with, because secrets are what make you sick. Secrets is the thing that made me sick for years and years. Okay, I was living a spiritual life, a religious life, a, a, a Christian life, uh, so to speak, but I was not living an honest life, a transparent life. Okay, because you were wounded in community. You were wounded, okay, in your family community. You were wounded in, your, in the family you were brought into. You were probably wounded in the society, in the school that you, you, you came up in. There were death words speaking over you. There were, there were destructive things done to you, maybe. Okay, and not that this is not for all of us. Some of us made the choice to go out of the way. Sometimes we just make a choice to go the wrong way. Okay, so I just want to let you know today that there is hope. And then I want to talk about you can be gripped by the grace of God. Okay, God is outrageously gracious. I want you to know that. Uh, he wants to heal you. When you understand how deep God's love is for you, how powerful it is, you will be able to walk with purity the rest of your life. You can. And many of us know we have. Some of us have walked in purity for years. And then we slipped and something happened. And we were suck a bunch by the enemy. And after that we feel that, that the enemy lies to us and tells us that we can't do it anymore. I want to tell you today that there's hope. That you can walk in purity. In spite of all the things that are surrounding you. In spite of this decadent age we live in. In spite of all the lies that hell, hell perpetrates on us. Grace is not a point of doctrine. Okay? Not a point of theology. Grace is a person. The person of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's only the cross of Jesus Christ, his shed blood, that gives us any hope. Your hope today is the shed blood of Jesus Christ. God wants you to have sweet revenge on the enemy. Okay? So, his gifts to you is through the grace of his son Jesus Christ. The very thing that kept you in bondage. God now takes and forms it as a weapon in your hand against the enemy. The very thing that you struggle with. The very thing that you, you battle with. Hey, Jason, how you doing, man? Okay, uh, the very thing that you battle with is the very thing God's going to use. God's going to take your testimony. Okay, I always like to say God takes my mess testimony. Okay, and He turns it into a testimony. God took my mess and brought me through a test, and now I've overcome, and I'm overcoming every day. It's a continual process, and as I walk boldly and courageously, hand in hand with God, I am more than a conqueror. So guess what? So are you. So today, I just want to focus on the painful events I talked about yesterday. But I want to let you know that there's hope, that there's life, that you're going to come through this. And on the other side of it, lives are going to be transformed. Lives are going to be changed. People, your family is going to be brought to a new level. Another generation, four generations, God has promised you of blessings versus curses. Financial blessing, okay? Spiritual blessing, okay? Blessing with your kids. You are blessed and highly favored. I want you to know that today. And so that's what I'm saying to you today. So um, just before I pray for you real quick, I just want to let you know, as I go back on my break, I want to let you know today, guess what? That you're more than a conqueror, as I always say. And so you warriors for freedom out there, because you are a warrior for the freedom of your purity, freedom of walking with a pure mind, and walking with the authority that God has given you. Okay, that authority that allows you to keep your family free, that authority that allows you to overcome in your finances, that authority that you have so that you can dream big dreams and get it done. You need to get fired up. You need to speak life over every circumstance and bring life into every circumstance today. And you can do that in spite of your challenges, in spite of the past, in spite of your failures. Guess what? You have an amazing future ahead of you. Okay, and guess what? You shall live. You shall not die. I want to let you know, warriors, you shall not die. You're going to overcome the evil one. And God is truly amazing. So I thank God today. I thank him that I get to share. And tomorrow, guess what? I want you guys to watch because tomorrow again is a confession, you know, true confession Friday. So I'm going to confess uh, some other lie, some other secret that I kept for years and years. And it's now out in the open. And as the Holy Spirit brings them to me, I reveal them. I'm not, I'm not ashamed. I'm not hiding anymore. I'm not in secret anymore. I'm walking in the light. Okay? 
And guess what? Whom the Son is set free is free indeed. So today, let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for your love, your mercy, your kindness, your ability to deliver. You deliver some of us over a process of time, and we got to do the work. Some of us get delivered instantaneously. You're a miracle working God. I speak healing over men today. I speak healing over lives today. I speak healing over families today. I speak healing over relationships today. And we rise up in authority, and we defeat the enemy that is attacking our family, and we have our sword pointing at our enemy instead of at our loved ones and our kids and our family. Bless every man today. Bless every woman warrior today. Bless every house today. Every household rise up that under the sound of my voice that sees whenever I say, I, whenever I show this and whoever sees this, I ask that they would be blessed and highly favored. In the name of Jesus, I speak and declare a miracle. That's it. Period. I'm out. Jason, have a good one. Hey, cuz, Muriel, see you later. Take care. I call you Francis, okay? Guess what? God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. I'm out. Talk to y'all later. Bye-bye. Ciao.